The Peenemünde Army Research Center German, here ever such Peenemünde, HVP, was founded in 1937 as one of five military proving grounds under the German Army Weapons Office here as Waffenamt. On April 2, 1936, the Aviation Ministry paid 750,000 Reichsmarks to the town of Wolgast for the whole northern peninsula of the Baltic island of Usedom. By the middle of 1938, the Army facility had been separated from the Luftwaffe facility and was nearly complete, with personnel moved from Kummersdorf. The Army Research Center OST consisted of Work OST and Work Süd, while Work West West was the Luftwaffe test site der Luftwaffe, one of the four test and research facilities of the Luftwaffe, with its headquarters facility at Erprobungstel Recklin. Topic. HVP organization Wernher von Braun was the HVP technical director Dr. Walter Thiel was deputy director and there were nine major departments Technical Design Office Walter J. H. Papa. Riedel Aeroballistics and Mathematics Laboratory Drive. Hermann Studing Wind tunnel drive. Rudolf Hermann. Materials laboratory drive. Mader. Flight guidance and telemetering devices. German BSM drive. Ernst Steinhoff. Development and fabrication laboratory. Arthur Rudolf. Test laboratory. Klaus Riedel. Future projects office. Ludwig Roth. Purchasing office. Mister. Genta, the measurements group Gerhard Riesig, was part of the BSM, and additional departments included the Production Planning Directorate Detmar Stahlknecht, the Personnel Office Richard Sundermayer, and the Drawings Change Service. <laughs> Guided missile and rocket development Several German guided missiles and rockets of World War II were developed by the HVP, including the V-2 rocket A4 sea test launches, and the Wasserfall 35 Peenemann trial firings, Schmetterling, Rheintichter, Typhon, and Ingen missiles. The HVP also performed preliminary design work on very long-range missiles for use against the United States. That project was sometimes called V-3 and its existence is well documented. The Peenemünde establishment also developed other technologies such as the first closed-circuit television system in the world, installed at Test Stand 7 to track the launching rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Aerodynamic Institute The supersonic wind tunnel at Peenemünde's Aerodynamic Institute", eventually had nozzles for speeds up to the record speed of Mach 4.4 in 1942 or 1943, as well as an innovative desiccant system to reduce the condensation clouding caused by the use of liquid oxygen, in 1940. Led by Rudolf Hermann, who arrived in April 1937 from the University of Aachen, the number of technical staff members reached 200 in 1943, and it also included Hermann Kurtzweg of the University of Leipzig and Walter Heusemann. Topic: <laughs> Heimat Artillery Park 11. Initially set up under the HVP as a rocket training battery number 444, Heimat Artillery Park 11 Karlshagen, Pomerania HAP 11 also contained the AA Research Command North for the testing of anti-aircraft rockets. The chemist Magnus von Braun, the youngest brother of Wernher von Braun, was employed in the attempted development at Peenemünde of anti-aircraft rockets. These were never very successful as weapons during World War II. Their development as practical weapons took another decade of development in the United States and in the USSR. <laughs> Peenemann V-2 production plant 
In November 1938, Walter von Brauchitsch ordered construction of an A4 production plant at Peenemünde, and in January 1939, Walter Dornberger created a subsection of WA Pruff 11 for planning the Peenemünde production plant project, headed by G. Schubert, a senior Army civil servant. By midsummer 1943, the first trial runs of the assembly line in the production works at Verka Sud were made. But after the end of July 1943 when the enormous hangar Fördergangshall 1 F1, mass production plant No. 1 was just about to go into operation, Operation Hydra bombed Peenemann. On August 26, 1943, Albert Speer called a meeting with Hans Kammler, Dornberger, Gerhard Degenkolb, and Karl Otto Sohr to negotiate the move of A4 main production to an underground factory in the Harz Mountains. In early September, Peenemann machinery and personnel for production including Alban Sawatsky, Arthur Rudolph, and about ten engineers were moved to the Middlework, which also received machinery and personnel from the two other planned A4 assembly sites. On October 13, 1943, the Peenemann prisoners from the small F1 concentration camp boarded rail cars bound for Konstein Mountain. Topic Operation Crossbow Two Polish janitors of Peenemann's Camp Trasenhide in early 1943 provided maps, sketches and reports to Polish Home Army Intelligence, and in June 1943 British intelligence had received two such reports which identified the rocket assembly hall, experimental pit, and launching tower. As the opening attack of the British Operation Crossbow, the Operation Hydra air raid attacked the HVPs sleeping and living quarters to specifically target scientists, then the factory workshops, and finally the experimental station on the night of August 17 18, 1943. The Polish janitors were given advance warning of the attack, but the workers could not leave due to SS security and the facility had no air raid shelters for the prisoners. A year later, on July 18, August 4, and August 25, the U.S. 8th Air Force conducted three additional Peenemann raids to counter suspected hydrogen peroxide production. Topic: <inaudible> Evacuation. <inaudible> As with the move of the V-2 production works to the Mittelwerk, the complete withdrawal of the development of guided missiles was approved by the Army and SS in October 1943. On August 26, 1943, at a meeting in Albert Speer's office, Hans Kammler suggested moving the A-4 development works to a proposed underground site in Austria. After a site survey in September by Papa Riedel and Schubert, Kammler chose the code name Zement Cement for it in December, and worked to blast an underground cavern into a cliff in Eben Sea near Lake Traunze commenced in January 1944. To build the underground tunnels, a concentration camp a sub-unit of Mauthausen-Gusen was erected in the vicinity of the planned production sites. In early 1944, construction work started for the test stands and launching pads in the Austrian Alps, code name Salamander, with target areas planned for the Tatra Mountains, the Alberg Range, and the area of the Ortler Mountain. Other evacuation locations included Hans Lindenmeyer's valve laboratory near Friedland moved to a castle near the village of Lutenberg, 10 km 6 miles south of Saarfield near the Bavarian border. The materials testing laboratory moved to an air base at Anklem. The wind tunnels moved to Kochel, then after the war, to the White Oak, Maryland located U.S. Navy's Naval Ordnance Laboratory. Engine testing and calibration to La Hestenthuringiava people being relocated from Peenemünde, the new organization was to be designated Entwicklungsgemeinschaft Mittelbuy English, Mittelbuy Development Company and Kammler's order to relocate to Thuringia arrived by teleprinter on January 31, 1945. On February 3, 1945, at the last meeting at Peenemünde held regarding the relocation, the HVP consisted of A4 development, modification 1940 people, a 4B development 27, Wasserfall and Typhoon development 1455, support and administration 760. 
The first train departed on February 17 with 525 people en route to Thuringia including Bleicherode, Sangerhausen district, and Bad Saxa and the evacuation was complete in mid-March. Poland Another reaction to the aerial bombing was the creation of a backup research test range near Blizna, in southeastern Poland. Carefully camouflaged, this secret facility was built by 2,000 prisoners from the Pustkow concentration camp. The Polish resistance movement Armia Krajowa succeeded in capturing an intact V-2 rocket here in 1943. It had been launched but didn't explode and was later retrieved intact from the Bug River and transferred secretly to London. Post-war The last V-2 launch at Peenemünde happened in February 1945, and on May 5, 1945, the soldiers of the Soviet Second Belorussian Front under General Konstantin Rokossovsky captured the seaport of Swinemund and all of Usedom Island. Soviet infantrymen under the command of Major Anatoly Vavilov stormed the installations at Peenemünde and found 75% wreckage. All of the research buildings and rocket test stands had been demolished, although rumors spread that the Soviet space program revived Peenemünde as a test range. More destruction of the technical facilities of Peenemünde took place between 1948 and 1961. Only the power station, the airport, and the railroad link to Zinowitz remained functional. The gas plant for the production of liquid oxygen still lies in ruins at the entrance to Peenemünde. Very little remains of most of the other Nazi German facilities there. The Peenemünde Historical Technical Museum opened in 1992 in the shelter control room and the area of the former power station and is an anchor point of ERIH, the European route of industrial heritage. In popular culture Peenemünde is a setting in the novels Fatherland, Gravity's Rainbow, Moonraker, The Rhineman Exchange, The Way the Crow Flies, and Space. In the novels of the colonization series, and in some other novels, Peenemünde survived World War II and later became a major space exploration launch center. The 1965 British thriller Operation Crossbow is a highly fictionalized account of the Nazi development of the V-1 and V-2 and the Anglo-American campaign to interdict it. The Nazi occupation of Poland and the Allied bombing of Peenemünde are depicted in the British feature film Battle of the V-1 called Missiles from Hell in the United States and some other countries, which starred the actor Michael Rennie. In the second book of the Danger Boy series of time travel tales, written by Mark London Williams, Dragon Sword, Peenemünde becomes a key setting in this and in the further novels. In the movie The Cockpit, Peenemünde becomes a test site for atomic bombs. In the film The Hindenburg 1975, the German countess played by Anne Bancroft leaves Germany because her estate in Peenemünde has been confiscated by the Nazi Germans. In the comic book, Ministry of Space, by Warren Ellis, Peenemann gets captured by the British Army. In the novelization of the film Dr. Strangelove or, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, written by Peter George, an explanation is given that the title character, Dr. Strangelove, had been wounded, and these wounds had left him with only one hand, and wheelchair bound, because of the bombings of Peenemann while he worked there for Nazi Germany. In the television series, UFO Hunters, Episode 305, Nazi UFOs, the Hunters visit Peenemann to track down evidence and interview experts about a rumored Nazi space exploration program that took place there. In the 2003 video game Secret Weapons Over Normandy, the base at Peenemann is featured as a mission and a map in multiplayer. In the 2017 video game Call of Duty, World War II, the base at Peenemünde is featured as a map in multiplayer. See also 
aggregate rocket family Mikhail Dvyatayev <laughs>